This year is 2021. How do we know that? Well, it's not a scientific absolute that the year has to have 2021. The year is based on history. The year is not based on science. Throughout early history, the number of the year only really mattered depending on who the ruler was, where you were living. You might say it's the third year of the rule of King Shuba Shuba Shuba. And that would be what mattered. Was it the third year or the fourth year? And if you got a new ruler, you would start the counting over again. That's good if you're only talking about the people in that region. But if you're comparing what happened in this time in history to that time in history within people in different continents, in different countries, now it gets complicated. What if I'm studying something in 2021? I want to look back at the year 1789 and see what was happening in France and compare that to what's happening in uh, Egypt in 1789. Were they related? Were they influenced by each other? The only way to make an effective comparison is to have a unified calendar system. When Pope Gregory brought in the Gregorian in calendar he made a unified system that everyone in the Mediterranean and European region was able to use. Why was he able to do this? Because of the power of the Catholic Church. During his reign as Pope, the Catholic Church ruled most of Europe. It was covering so much territory and the Catholic Church had so much power that if they said you're using a new calendar, you're using a new calendar. So his system based the years on an estimate of when Jesus' birth was. He would put them on a number line and on one end you have the earliest years counting backwards from the date of Jesus. One year BC would be one year before the birth of Jesus. Two BC would be two years before the birth of Jesus and so on and so on. Anything after the birth of Jesus we would start counting up. One year after the birth of Jesus would be 1 AD, Anno Domini, which means the year of our Lord, which means any year after Jesus was born would be considered the year of our Lord. 2 AD would be two years after Jesus was born, and so on and so on. Lord means someone who has power over others. In this case, it would be the Lord Jesus Christ, who would be the leader of the Christian religion. Circa means around that time, like a circle. If we say a period of time or an era of time, we're talking about a certain segment of time that has a common characteristic. So there it is, BC and AD. On a number line, it looks like this. One BC on one side, one AD on the other side. It's important to know that there isn't a year zero. It just switches over in a moment. Now, because two-thirds of the world is not Christian, referring to Christ doesn't make much sense to them when we talk about years in history. And even if they were Christian, measuring time usually doesn't have a whole lot to do with Jesus Christ himself. So another system was introduced called BCE and CE. BCE is a non-religious version of BC. BCE means before the common era, and that is the same time as BC. CE is the same as AD. CE means the common era, meaning the time that we're living in now, and that's the same as AD. It's just without a religious connection. Now here's some other facts you need to know. Circa means around, like a circle. We might say something happened circa 1700, which means around the year 1700. It might have been 1705 or 1710 or 1689, but it's putting it around that time. There's 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour, 24 hours in a day, about 30 days in a month, 365 and a quarter days in a year, 10 years in a decade, and 100 years in a century. When we study history, there are two different ways to think about it. There is chronologically and thematically. Chronological means placing the order of events in the time sequence that they happened. This is easy when we talk about the same group of people. We know what happened first with them, what happened next, and what happened later. Once we have different storylines from different groups of people, then things start to get complicated. You might have overlapping storylines from different countries or different continents. That's when we bring in a thematic approach. A thematic comes from the root word theme. You organize studies based on a theme of what they are about. Common characteristics. We might study and compare revolutions in different countries. We might compare the art and engineering from different cultures. Using a theme, we get to look at the big picture beyond the individuals and the events.
When we create a timeline, we can combine those themes with chronology. We can put several events in order, but to make it more meaningful, we can choose events that match a particular theme. For example, you can choose events from your life. That would be the theme, you and your life. When you were born, your first day of school, the first time you ate lunch in the cafeteria, or whatever else significant happened to you. You can put events from revolutions all around the world, and we can compare. Did they all happen around the same time? Did one revolution inspire another revolution? A timeline can help show how change happened over time. What would you use a timeline to study?